Hello, and welcome to the Profitable Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Kimberly Rich, and as the founder of the Bold Life Movement and a fellow coach for more than seven years, I know the challenges that many of you face when launching or growing your coaching business. And I'm here to pull back the curtain on the coaching industry and help you overcome roadblocks to make the impact you were born to make. Each week, I'll be interviewing successful coaches from every corner of the industry to share exactly how they have managed to generate massive impact and income. From strategy to psychology, we cover it all. This show is presented to you by Transformation Academy, a global marketplace of courses and coaching certifications. So whether you are already part of our Epic community or you're brand new to this show, If you're ready to learn what it takes to turn your passion for service into a profitable business, then keep listening. You are in the right place. Welcome back to episode 39 of the Profitable Coach Podcast. This week's episode is with the one and only Courtney Spiteri. Courtney is the creator of the Goddess Revolution community, and she has devoted her life to helping ambitious women who are living their best life, but just not experiencing their best life, who have become so addicted to the achievement that they've forgotten the celebration. And she's really helping them to come back into their embodiment and to really love the life that they've created for themselves. I'm obsessed with this conversation with Courtney. As you'll hear in the following episode, we cover so much ground. Everything from how she quantum leaped her Instagram growth to really leaning into what it means to be seen in her business. And she's a master storyteller. You'll get to hear some really powerful stories in today's conversation. So if you like it, then do me a favor, hit the subscribe button on your podcast app of choice. Check out all the show notes at theprofitablecoach.com slash 039. And if we're not already friends on Instagram, head over to Instagram at the Kimberly Rich and shoot me a message. Let me know what you liked about today's show. So without further ado, please welcome my beautiful, inspiring guest, Courtney Spiteri. Hello, welcome back to the Profitable Coach Podcast. I have with me today the beautiful Courtney Spiteri. Courtney, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. Yes. I've been looking forward to this episode because Courtney and I connected in a mastermind that we are a part of. We were on a shared call with a group of women and I just knew that I loved her energy and I loved the way she embodied what it is that she helps her clients with. So I had to share her story with the Profitable Coach audience. So Courtney, will you kick us off by telling the listeners what it is that you currently are passionate about helping your clients to achieve or overcome? Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is something that is so alive and true in my heart and has been for so many months and years at the moment. I feel like growing up and you know, into my 20s and 30s, I had this life that was perfect on paper. You know, I did the study, I got the degree, I was working, I had the children, I have the like the hot husband, the all the things, you know. Um, but my <laughs> for self-proclaimed, but my experience <laughs> of of my inner world and my experience of my connection to self was something that was always really lacking. So while the projection of my external world was, you know, what so many people dream of, my actual experience of it was there was so much lack there. And so what I'm so passionate about at the moment and really working with with my clients moving forward is how can we bridge this? How can we how can we lean into all the things that life is, you know, the depths and the joy and the happiness. And so we give ourselves the opportunity to actually experience all that's on offer in real time, as opposed to just moving through the days, moving through life, moving through the achievements and never actually taking that breath to come back to self. And this is something I found in my journey when I actually tapped into my own self-love, my own worthiness, my own goddess energy, I like to call it everything just exploded. Like my experience of life just exploded tenfold. Hmm. Was there a turning point that you remember where you were like, all right, enough is enough. And if so, what sort of like culminated to that moment and how did things shift following it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There was a 2022 if you've been on my socials, if you've been following me, it was a huge year. I had a lot of grief. I had a lot of loss. Um, I lost my sister unexpectedly. I had a baby six weeks later and then four months later, my dad passed away. 
So it was this, it was this, yeah, it was this huge year. It was just massive. Um, But towards the end of the year, it was quite a complicated relationship with my dad at the time. Um, Some things transpired, which I won't go into now, but some things transpired. And I had this moment of realizing that I was living my life from the position of needing the reassurance, the approval, the, um, yeah, my power was sourced out. That's probably the best way to do it. My power was absolutely sourced out. And so, as I was saying before, I couldn't experience this internal joy because all my actions were coming from a place of someone else give me love, someone else fill me up. And then I had this moment of like, what am I going to do here? I'm either going to carry this feeling of worthlessness for the rest of my life. I'm going to carry this story or I'm not. And it was this defining moment of, oh my goodness. And it was, I'm so grateful for all that loss and that death and rebirth of myself because I'm like, I get to define who I am now. I get to take the next step and create who I'm becoming as opposed to being who I've always been based on everyone else's expectations and thoughts and the things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm hearing that this is kind of like a recent big transformation that you've been through. And and I know that you've been serving clients for a while. So do you want to share a little bit about how the way that you show up as a coach or a facilitator has shifted before that moment and since then? Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. In so many ways. I was in this, I was in a structure. I, my background's in psychology, neuropsychology, neuroscience. I love, I'm such a big nerd. Like I'm a brain nerd. I'm a behavior nerd. I will just deep dive right into that. But I was living and in, in my coaching, in my, um, in my practice was very systems orientated. It was very going through the, going through the flow. And I felt as I started to connect more back into myself, I felt this calling to just come from my authentic expression. It was so scary at the beginning. I felt like I had all the rules and all the boundaries where I just couldn't step out what I had known myself to be. And then I just started to play. I just was like, oh gosh, I really need to follow this intuition. I really just need to say this to the client. I really need to just lean into this. And what happened was crazy, crazy. Like my clients' experiences, even if they went through a, you know, a diagnostic process and didn't get a diagnosis, even if they went through this, but the journey with me, they were like, wow, like it was opening them up. It was activating that part of them that I had activated within myself. And it, it was just incredible. I'm getting, I did get that she was talking yes. about it because they're like, wow, I've never seen myself in this way. And now I've almost started to pave the path another path for them to then move into for themselves so yeah it became incredibly powerful my work so much so that I'm now the duality of it there's still the psychology in that clinical realm but also now I'm giving myself the space to do this outside of the psychology to do it one-on-one with women so we can explore all the facets that we are as opposed to just being in that one container Mm, I The theme that I keep hearing a lot, not just in our conversation, but in our community is around Mm -hmm. embodiment. And it's less about like having a formula, a framework, a curriculum, a promised result, and more about people just see how we're living and the energy that we're exuding. And they're like that. I don't currently have that. I want that. And yet there is this element of like, marketing ourselves and putting ourselves out there so that people can say, hey, I want that, or they know that there's an invitation to get some of that. So I'm curious how you're merging the embodiment that you clearly possess and the marketing side of like letting people know, hey, you can work with me in this new way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This is like so where we're at at the moment. So the embodiment I just would explode. Like if everyone could just come into my space and see this is life, like, please. But yeah, the strategy, the strategy, right? Before I was so strategy and now I feel like I've gone back the other way where I'm just like, woo, let's just have fun and play. And I need to like, you know, hold the two. Um, 
So the marketing side of it at the moment is, yeah, I'm actually going through this process of rebrand and getting really clear on who I'm working with, who I'm serving before. And this is so funny. It's such a recent breakthrough, but before, before, when I looked at how I was sharing this new element of my business in particular, it was still very much from that good girl, please come and like me, please, you know, come into my space so you can see that I'm enough. And just in the last, you know, month, couple of weeks, it's just been like, no, I have to bring this goddess, this leader forward into my marketing into. So having that dominance, I don't feel is the right word, but leadership with this is my messaging. This is the women I work with. You're up for big things. You know, your dreams, you're ready to fight for your dreams and I will come and meet you right there. And having Mm. that really clear in my branding, in the messages that I'm putting out into the world, which with the new haircut today and yesterday, I feel like is like, I know, right. (laughs) I feel like this is it. Like, this is what I'm here for now. It is, it is so clear. And in terms of the strategy of it, I'm very much, and probably similar you, Kim, like the energy around it. I'm not one that's like, I have to post every single day. I have to show up every single day. It's like, where am I sitting energetically? How am I, what, who am I calling in based on my internal world? Um, and using the energy first to guide. Or if I'm like, no, I haven't shown up. I need to really re-engage or promote. How can I create that energy? How can I shift my internal world and show up in that way? And I think this is the biggest thing that I bring into mentorship is what's the energy behind this? You can do all the strategy. You can do all the strategy 100% and it not work. There's this other element, particularly as women, that we need to move into. Yeah. And this conversation is so timely because before we jumped on, you were asking how the retreat was that I just attended with our mentor. And I found in that environment, it was so easy for me to feel embodied. It was so easy for me to create. I'm in the jungles of Colombia. My skin is out. It's warm. Like I'm with other women being juicy and fun, like super easy. And then I come home back on the computer, which in and of itself feels more masculine and structured Mm -hmm. as a way to spend my time. And I'm recognizing my ability to be visible sort of wane a little bit. So now I'm in this recalibration period of like, okay, how do I, like you said, cultivate that inner energy of play and like what feels good and what feels authentic and, and sort of not manufacture, but in all senses of the word, like manufacture the energy. Like how do I redirect and recreate the energy that I want versus succumbing to the energy of what is familiar? Um, So I'm curious if you have some Mm. habits when you find yourself Mm. slipping into an energy that isn't what you would choose, how to bring it back to like something that's more fun. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I... I know I like I completely resonate with where you're at and I feel like the last few weeks as I was saying we're getting into that stagnant and I'm like oh I just I don't know I it's here but it's not here and then what happens is you get into your head and then you're like well maybe I need to rebrand maybe I need to do this and then you're all up here and you're completely out of the body um and so linking back to what you were saying with a retreat I tr- I try and I know it feels it can feel a bit as you're saying manufactured like you're making it up but you are kind of making it up to fill into the yeah. space. So at the same time, Take it till you make it. That, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, but what I do, and I'm in the process at the moment, we're in the process of moving house and, um, and attracting in our dream house and all the things. And I, I keep saying to my husband, I just want the house to be, I want to be inspired in the house. I want to be inspired. So I'm all about like setting up the scaffold around me. So that is more my natural energy state. But when I find that it's dropping, I will literally go and do something that scares me. I'll do something that Mm. I have never done before. So where I live on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, there's just a plethora of classes and offerings that is all about feminine embodiment, dance, choir. Like I joined a choir. um, Oh, my God. I know. I do not see it. That's so fun. It's so fun. (laughs) This beautiful woman on the coast every month, she like writes – and they're banging songs, like they're, they're awesome songs. Um, but it's all about like feminine voice activation. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go to my choir once a month. Um, so I do that. And then last weekend um, I had a client actually reach out and be like, look, I know you, you wanted to get more into dance. There's this like this morning disco 
on Saturday mornings and it's like a fitness Zumba thing. She's like, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, I want to come. So that's where I'll go. (laughs) That's where I'll go to really like put myself back in the energy, embody the energy. And then it will, it just ripples out again and again and again. So that stagnantness, I find I actually have to move. I, yeah, I have to get myself back in the spaces or create the spaces for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm finding that when I allow myself to be um, affected by my circumstances versus creating my circumstances, then I have the stories, oh, there's no dance classes in the small town that I live in. Um, There's no, all the things that I would typically have gone to back when I lived in a bigger city. And yet Mm. there are so many of those things on the internet and I don't actually need a dance class to dance. (laughs) And I can create dance parties wherever I go if I want. And so really just deciding like, are you the creator of your reality or are you a victim to your circumstances? And oh my gosh. Like <laughs> being and the you, former and- as often as possible. Exactly. And on that, you get to choose. You get to choose. At the start of the year, I created a um, free community, which is becoming a paid membership um, subscription next month. But it recently evolved into this goddess revolution, which is like so juicy and fun. And the goddess revolution was all about connecting back to self because so many of the women in my circles are mothers and business owners and wives and friends. And there's always this experience of there's not enough time, this lack, I have to pull away from one area to fill up another area. And I really was just became so checked in with this and wanted to recreate like, no, who you're being in your business resonates into who you're being as a wife, resonates who you're being with your children. Like it's, it compounds, right? So within the goddess revolution, and this is, this links back to the dance party. I curated this one hour per day for you. And within this one hour, there's three different actions and every month the theme changes. And this month was literally, it was called balance. So it's balance. It's like 20 minutes breath work. So just spending time on the breath and checking in and we're doing like breath work Mm. teachings. And then it's 20 minutes bouncing your booty where like women just put on the music. I know they just put on their favorite tunes. (laughs) Granted, I have to listen to children's music because I'm usually with the kids, but we put on music (laughs) and we, we just like dance for 20 minutes a day. It's just amazing. And then the other 20 minutes is aligned action, bravery or aligned action towards your goal. Um, And so it's just incredible. So yeah, that curator of your own experience, can you join a container like that? Can you, is there a free online class? Is there a free yoga class on YouTube? Like, and you get to go first that take with that energy because there will always be, and I know you would resonate with this so much being in um, Shoshana as well, but like there's already always so many reasons not to. Are you like, what life are you fighting for? Yeah. Yeah. And I was talking with a client yesterday who is adamant about creating a men's group and really like creating an opportunity for men to have better, more connected friendships. And we were working through some of the fears that come up around not currently having a community of people to reach out to, to invite this. And I'm like, right, you are creating it because you need it. And there's going to be a like learning curve or a calibration period, but so many people get to benefit from your current feeling of what I want doesn't exist. I have to make it. And I think that that's the thing that we need to remind ourselves as leaders and as leaders of leaders that what we want doesn't exist currently because we are meant to create it. And it's harder sometimes, but also so easy when you succumb to the fact that you were made to build it. Like that's why you're here. (laughs) That leading with no evidence. Oh, it's so, it can be so sticky. Like, but what if no one shows up? But what if, when I, when I launched this, it was originally called Transform and now the Goddess Revolution. When I launched Transform, my energy was so high with it. I had like 25 people come in just off a, um, Instagram live. Like it was just like, yes, 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 yes. It was incredible. And then life happens and I was learning as I went and all the things and people dropped off and, but it's the process, isn't it? It's leaning into the process and continuing to show up without the evidence because you know, you're the leader. 
you know, yeah. like exactly what you said, Kim, that you're the one that's supposed to be creating this and letting yeah. go of how it's supposed to look at that particular time. This It's supposed to be a small container. It's supposed to explode. It, you know, just having that Trusting acceptance it. of where it's at right now. Yeah. 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 And also, I think that there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from the things we launch where no one shows up and then we launch again and no one shows up. And then maybe we launch again and no one shows up. Where is our energy actually not really wanting this thing or or this version of this thing? Because maybe it's something you've seen other people do, so you think you should be doing it. But in actuality, you don't want to have to do that thing at all. So really getting some self-awareness around, oh, do I just need to tweak this one thing or do I actually not want to create it like this? And that is okay too. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. I had a question at the risk of getting too much in our heads. <laughs> Courtney, have you have a decent community on Instagram at this point. And I'm curious if there are specific things that you did to pour energy into culmin you know, like um generating a community there, or if that was sort of an organic response to your embodiment. This oh. This is, it hits my heart. So like, this was me being seen. It was mm-hmm. me being seen. I had, I'm going to say, um, October, September last year, I think I had 600 followers. And wow, now I this have is over, new. Really new. And now I have um, over 9,000, which is, it just wow. exploded. Um, yeah. And I can't. I don't know whether it was the quantum, whether I don't know what it was. Um, But what happened last year, that activation of self that, no, I'm going to move forward. So that happened, that happened a few years ago that like, no, I'm going to step into my self-worth. And then I set up things to just keep deepening, deepening into that. But what happened was I, um, I started, this is so random, but I started baking gluten-free bread. Like I was so sick of eating shit bread. I went to a course and I learned how to bake sourdough bread. And I was so excited and ignited by my own ability to bake bread. I started sharing it online. It was so organic. This is, yeah, it was just me. And No pun intended. (laughs) And then it just, the energy again, just kept kind of folding and people kind of just kept coming in and it was coming up to the year anniversary of my dad's passing. And I, and I wanted to, sorry, it's such a like yeah, emotion, big topic that year. And I wanted to symbolize my growth in an external way for everything that I journeyed in the eight, previous 18 months. And so I said to my husband, I have this calling. I'm going to wake up on the day after he died because that would have been the morning that both my sister and dad were spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and climb this mountain near us. But I want to do it in the dark. So I want to be up the top of the mountain at sunrise. And he's like, okay, like he's very supportive. He's like, okay, are you going to be okay though, like climbing a mountain in the darkness? (laughs) And I was just like, I just, I know I'm going to be set. Like I was obviously responsible, but I was like, yeah, yep. Yeah, this is just what I need to do. I need to be there at sunrise. And so I got up, I got up at four o'clock in the morning. I drove to this mountain. I was terrified, but also like so exhilarated. And I climbed this mountain and I sat at the top of the mountain and watched the sunrise. And it was such a deeply honoring and moving experience for me. Mm-hmm. And as like symbolically, as I was walking back down the mountain, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see everything I'd overcome. I didn't see all the the rocks I had to step up, all the branches, all I didn't see it. So it was actually so emotional walking down, seeing how far I'd come moving up this mountain and getting back to the point of my followers. This is part of it. Um, I love this and then story. I, <laughs> oh, I, right, and I was, and at the time I didn't even realize how defining this moment was for me. Climbing a mountain in darkness is what I had been doing for 18 months. And then having done this, yeah, right. And I didn't know the steps and I couldn't see the steps, but I just kept going. Like when life gives you such big things that you don't even know how to hold, you do just have to walk in darkness because you've never had to hold that before. 
but the path appears. And I think that's when we get in our head, we forget that the path will always appear when we keep moving if forward. Just yeah. And so I came back down and I was like, I have to share this. It was such a soul calling. I'm like, I have to share this. Um, and I created one of my first reels, I guess, at the time. Um, I was already showing up in lo- online and talking very much about like feminine energy and tapping back into self. And it was the same theme through the bread making and your authentic ex- expression. And then I was like, I'm just ready to be seen. I'm ready to share my story. I created a reel and it just exploded, Kim. It exploded. Like it, it took off initially and then stopped. And I was like, wow. And then it just took on a life of its own. And I think it's because I was just seen. I was just so authentically allowed myself to be seen and share this journey of it isn't always easy, but you've always got you. You've always got you. And having that trust despite all the adversities and then it just went crazy. And I was getting hundreds of followers every single day. I was getting hundreds of shares on it every single day. Like it was just this absolute overflow because I think I connected so deeply to my story going back to the energy and I just had to share it with the world. Um, And so you could look at it like it was just chance, it was just coincidence, it was just a good reel. But the shift internally for me was I was seen. I was seen and I completely owned my story. The way, I don't know if it's too heavy, but like my sister passed away unexpectedly by her own choice. Um, Mm. and there was a lot of shame and stigma and things attached to it. And I just owned all of it in such a beautiful, loving way that a lot of people resonated with the authenticity of being seen. And so the more we lean into being us, the more we receive other people of our frequency. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this is why we both connect through the mentor that we've chosen Shoshana because so much of her mission is all around slaying shame and just like letting the full spectrum of humanity be not just allowed or accepted, but embraced. And I think that when I reflect on every moment where people like came and appreciated what it was I was creating, it's because I was appreciating what it was I was creating. I was allowing my fullest expression to come through unfiltered. And I, so when you, when I hear you say I was seen, I was seen, what I hear is you were seen by you, like you were allowing your fullness and in turn, it welcomed other people to allow it. Exactly. Oh my goodness. That sums it up so well. And this is the thing I think when we're, we're building online businesses, when we're building online brands and I say this and I feel like I'm literally coaching myself through my own head (laughs) at the moment, but it's like, what do people want to see? How do I be, how do I show? And there is elements, like there's elements of marketing and taking good photos and having like clean content and all the things, but at its essence, it's like, who am I being? Like who, who, what am I showing up as? What's fun for me? Because you will see through it. You know yourself, if you're scrolling and you see someone trying it on, you can feel the energy. We're all so intuitive naturally. So it's about stepping into that being of your authentic self, which I think in a lot of the communities, people don't want to hear because they're like, no, I want the strategy so I get the 10,000 followers in a few months. Like I I want that. And it's like, oh, you might get that. But what's going to be so much deeper and more fulfilling in the long run is coming back here so you actually enjoy the process and you get to enjoy being you in that process of gaining the followers, building the business, whatever it might be. Yeah, because who wants 10,000 followers or the proverbial 10,000 followers, $10 million, whatever, if it's not fun? Like, (laughs) if you don't like who you are. (laughs) Yeah, like that sounds terrible, actually. (laughs) So if we need to give something tangible, something specific for people who are listening, I would say get really effing good at storytelling. Like, I had forgotten the question I even asked Courtney because I was so captivated by her story and I was able to like deduce the moral by the time I got to the end of it or the the peak of it, if you will, because like that is the power of a good storyteller. And so having the capacity to reverse engineer your breakthroughs and understand what were turning points in your life and then convey that in a really powerful story, that is marketing that will get you the followers, the clients, the whatevers. 
Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Zooming out that reel, and if you go on, you'll see it because it's all my other reels sit at I know thousands of views, and that this one went into the millions. This is like three point something million go views. Watch it. it, it <laughs> it's like, and it's so raw, but it's a it's a story. It's the story, and it's the triumph. It's literally yeah, and so mm. many people resonated with it on so many different levels. Um, and it was, it was sharing your, my, my authentic expression and the story. And I think that's what we miss. As I said before, we, we try and do the right thing as opposed to going and living life and then sharing the story of life. That's what people connect to. They want to know yeah. that you've done it and that they can walk it too. Um, and that, that's where the connection comes from, I think. Yeah. And the other thing I want to like really acknowledge about your journey is the, the walking in the dark part, because I think that a lot of people see these examples of a quantum leap or they hear stories of someone who just, their reel went viral and they're like, yeah, but that's not happening to me. Yeah. But yeah. And you were also sharing before that you were being consistent. You were doing Mm -hmm. the work on yourself. You weren't just hiding at home, taking endless courses and like never being brave. Like you, there is an element of consistent bravery up until that point. Oh my gosh, in so many ways. Even if we don't look at the reel and the following and all the things, from January that year to January this year, I am unrecognizable as a human, absolutely unrecognizable inside and out. And what I did was that consistent brave action, which is, again, why I resonated so much with Shoshana, but I went into an intuitive, a a five-week intuitive mentorship um, in mid last year that felt stretchy at the time. Now I'm in like this 12-month amazing container at the time and I had to take brave action I had to I'd been on this podcast I was hiding all these parts of myself and my mentor Mel was like you have to share that podcast and I was like I don't know and I did and I you know I consistently kept stretching and stretching and stretching and and that's what that's what you don't see you look online and you see this like one snapshot in time of someone's art and their expression and it doesn't capture all the small steps every single day yeah. or every week or however often you're showing up for yourself. Yeah. And I think that one of my favorite like tweetables from the retreat was Shoshana said, you're not overwhelmed. You're scared. You're not confused. You're scared. Like you're not busy. You're not lazy. You're none of that. You're just scared. So <laughs> I like I say this with so much love to the listeners and to my clients and anyone who comes through any TA program with me is like all the questions you think you have are just a distraction from taking action just sharing just inviting because the fear literally never goes away and it's a sign that you're stretching which is perfect yeah like, and you <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely I thought there would be this stage in my growth in my all the things that I get to and I'm like, it's sorted. There's no more fear. There's no more stretch. It doesn't go away. And so now what I do, I'm like, all right, I'm just leaning in. How, how uh-huh. scared can I get? How brave yes. can I be? You know, I might yes. take a little break and be like, oh, I'll be comfortable for a day. And I'm like, all right, let's get back on it. And this is, this is it. You not resisting it and leaning into it. Right. Yeah. Full body. Yes. My body's like, zing, 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 like this. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I created at the beginning of this year as like an accountability project for myself was the boldest year yet challenge. So every week I'm committed to doing something bold. And there are weeks when I have to be like, well, I guess that was kind of bold. And I kind of like cheat. I don't cheat for the sake of cheating, but it's like I I count something whereas other weeks I create something. So, I'm I would love if you have any top of mind things that you've done this year that you're like this was scary, this was scary so that I can take notes and I can add them to my list. I need some more scary moves. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel like it's so, and this in the month as a, of the goddess revolution, it's all, all been about bravery. And I totally resonate yeah. with what you're saying, Kim, because sometimes I'm like, I'll just do a reel and it'll be a bit vulnerable. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, a, it's a tiny stretch, but no. <laughs> I went to this really, and again, I know, actually, no, she has an online container I'm going to send you. She's amazing. Her name is um, Abby up here on the coast. I went to this really sexy, feminine embodiment dance class which was like so brave and bold again that idea of being seen oh my goodness off the top of my head big brave moves 
One that's so alive and true, I don't know if this resonates for you, is the last few days in particular, dropping the good girl act, dropping the Mm. pleasing act and using your voice. If there are any stages throughout your week where there's something you're not saying, say it. Mm. This was such a brave one for me where it's like, Oh, I was I was going to buy a chair yesterday from a friend and I didn't realize it was really used and really dirty and I didn't want to say I didn't want to buy it anymore. Like and this sounds so silly and light, but it's like I, it and compounds. I was confronted with it compounds and I was like, I'll just buy it and then I'll resell it. And I was like, no, we're not buying the chair. Like and use that part of your voice. So where are you not using your voice I think is a huge thing, particularly for women in just showing up in that bravery Mm, I love that. I feel like, yeah. Sometimes, what, what? on the contrary. Yeah. <laughs> you too much. Air, I, um, I've deleted those words from my vocabulary. I, I but... agree. I was like, as soon as I said, I was like, there is nothing that's too much. <laughs> that being said, as like an Aries, you know, bold life advocate, very assertive, sometimes the bold move for me is choosing to not have to say the thing and and allow allow the dust to sort of just settle and allow things to fall where they are without needing to like understand it know what's going to happen have my truth shared because it's like maybe my truth will be different in 24 hours let's see let's experiment with that so that's actually a bold thing I've been trying on lately (laughs) that's amazing that is incredible it is it's so I was thinking that as you were you were sharing that. I'm like, what, what would be your boldest move? Do you think? Well, that's the thing is like, sometimes, I mean, bold looks different on everyone. So I just want to clarify Mm. that. Like it is, and bold looks different a year ago to now, like going to ecstatic dance was very bold for me seven years ago. Now it's like, I don't think twice about it. It's bold for me not mm-hmm. to go to exact dance, you know? <laughs> um, mm. So this is part of how it's been a challenge to come up with things every week. Cause I feel like my com- comfort zone has expanded so much that I'm recalibrating. Like what is the edgy thing? Maybe the edgy thing is being consistent every day with writing and not doing what feels great in the moment. Maybe that's the bold thing. I'm trying that on for size. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see 52 weeks in to the challenge what has transpired. Yeah, this is amazing. This is, yeah, in the, the um, Goddess Revolution, I, I drop in and I do messages and we were talking about bravery over the last few weeks. And I was saying in this, like in this space, it looks different for everyone. And one of the women was showing up and she's like, I just can't finish. I just can't finish. And mm the lens that I was taking talking about bravery was that action, go and do the dance class, go and jump out of a plane, go and do this. And I was like, what would be really brave for you? And an area where you would have to really look at yourself and hold yourself through this would be finishing the course that you're currently in, finishing the book, finishing. And that is the braveness for you, like for you, maybe for you, Kim, but, but like leaning into what area of my life am I not looking at deliberately? Because like you say, yeah. I'm like you, I can go do any class now. I'm like, woo, at the start of the time, it was like, oh, this is a bit scary now. Like this is stretchy, not so much, but like where are the areas where I'm like, okay, where would it really be bold and it not necessarily be this big celebration energy, but this more intimateness with myself yeah. and that in and of itself can be so bold. Yeah, I think that boldness often comes. I love how we've like shifted into the bold life movement conversation here. Um, oh, I love it. Shout out, humble brag! I'll link to my own podcast. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I think that what it really comes down to is like, okay, bravery, audacity, and sometimes it's just about choosing different. And so, if my mo has been do the fun thing, do the brave thing, be out there, maybe choosing different is like reining it in and having some consistency being bold and brave enough like you said to finish the book that one rings very true for me right now because I've I've announced the book yet again can she finish it yeah <laughs> and it's in isn't That's it bold. it's in like the final <laughs> details of life and this is it like this is the stretch doesn't have to be this 
big thing. It can be an intimate thing. And yeah. where will that ripple out? One of the strategies just really quickly, and this is something that in my one-to-one container and even um, I'm doing a retreat later in the year, but this activation of future self, because I was the same coming into this year. I was like, where will I be in 12 months? Where will I be in 12 months? And then I got really intentional. I was like, who am I moving into? Who am I becoming? Mm. And I called her in and I created her this version of me in 12 months time. And then that bold action or the brave action or whatever, um, you know, word you choose is like, what would she take? What step would she take in this moment? She would sit down Mm -hmm. and read the book. She would sit down Mm -hmm. and finish the program. She would, yeah, create that space. And I hold her and myself and move into that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. This is like really giving me the permission slip and the reminder that sometimes what I envision boldness as like being out here is actually like coming here, grounding in, finishing the course, finishing the book, whether you're reading or writing, like literally finishing. (laughs) Finishing. And that can be so bold because the thing is, it's not the finishing. It's the like, it's looking at the story, looking at the worth looking at the underneath of why am I not finishing why aren't I giving myself the gift of finishing something I've begun yeah yeah and that's often what we're trying not to sit with Mm. I don't know how much you've gone into Ben Hardy's stuff Shoshana talks about him all the time in the mastermind but um he has a program out right now and his new book coming coming out that's all about your past not dictating your future and he has a lot of work around like communing with your future self and i think that that's really powerful to just sort of like that that is bold to claim doesn't matter what's happened i'm choosing what happens i'm choosing like we were talking about at the beginning of this call just to bring it full circle like we get to decide that we are the creator of our, our reality Absolutely. This is everything. This is the space that I show up in every single day now. It is a part of me that I am redefining in every moment, not from a place of who I am right now is not whole and complete, but from a place of I get to choose in every single moment who I'm becoming and how I want to show up and how I want to react. I don't get it right every time. I have two small children. Sometimes I'm really tired and grumpy. You know, I'm human. (laughs) But (laughs) <laughs> but the conscious awareness, the observer is of moving to that place. And I resonate with that so deeply. And I say that in that reel that I shared again, but it's what happens to us is not who we are. Who we are yeah. is who we choose to be in face of what happens to us. And so we have, we're in a creative process of life. And this is where we get stuck is I've, I've, but I've always done that. So drop it, do another way, try it on, drop it again, pick something else up and you'll, you'll learn really quickly who you actually want to be. Yes. Yes. This is one of my biggest reflections on past partnerships is like, oh, I really liked who I was with that person or, oh, I really did not like who I was when I was with that person. So A, they probably weren't a good fit. And also now I get to see ways that I can choose to react if such similar situations arise in the future. And, and just trusting that like, that was feedback for me, like, bless that man. And that was feedback. (laughs) Yeah, It was all learning. It was all information. Yeah. It's all information. Yep, exactly. Uh, Well, Courtney, tell us where we can find more of you so that all of our listeners can go check out that reel and the goddess revolution. Oh, yeah. So my main platform is Instagram. I'm in the process at the moment of website and all the things, but you'll find me on Instagram. I am Courtney Jade. Um, and there's a link in there for, to apply for one-to-one mentorship. Just DM me at the moment and you can join the Goddess Revolution for free in April. If you join in April, you get it free for the rest of the year. Um, but as I mentioned, as of next month, it is going into a paid um, membership subscription. So Lots of different ways to plug Get in. Get in I'm there. there. Just, yeah, it's so exciting. I just love it. And every day there's just new people showing up and coming into the energy and it's just compounding. Like you would know, Kim, you just you start to come back here and it just ripples out. It gives permission, other people the permission to do the same. I love it. I love it. Any parting words of wisdom that you would give to our, our new and aspiring coaches?
just be you. Just be you. As deep as you go and the world will adjust in the best possible way when you just be you. So beautiful. Thank you, love. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Big thank you to Courtney and to all of you listeners who tuned into this week's episode. I'm so grateful to have such elevating conversations on this show and people who are really showing that it's possible to create a business around just living an embodied, empowering, inspiring life. So as a friendly reminder, as a coach, your one job is to stay inspired, to stay connected to yourself, to stay true to yourself. And if you want to get access to more of Courtney's magic, head over to theprofitablecoach.com slash 039 for episode 39. And be sure to follow Courtney over on Instagram. Check out that reel that she mentioned and start to lean into the bold, brave thing that you can do in your own business and watch the magic unfold.